Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day five of the Mineer Christian Church Easter devotional series. If today's the first time that you've tuned in to this series, you can find all of the previous videos will be at mineercc.org slash Easter. Yesterday, Michelle shared with you about Abraham and Isaac, and today we're going to go over to the land of Egypt, and we're going to look at the story of the Exodus and the story of Passover specifically. Now, Israel had been in slavery in Egypt for a long time, and God rose up a person named Moses, and he called him to lead his people out of Egypt. And so he was supposed to go to Pharaoh and convince Pharaoh to let his people go, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he was not willing to do that. So God brought on a series of plagues on Pharaoh. And today we're going to read specifically about the last plague, which is the plague of the killing of the firstborn. And what God did to save and bring his people out of that situation. So specifically, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 12 to begin today. So let's go there. I'm going to read from you starting in verse one, and I believe we're going to go through verse 29. So let's do it. Exodus 12 verse one says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, that they are to each one take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now, if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the number of persons in them, according to what each man should eat. You are to divide the lamb. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel will kill it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night, <clears throat> roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled at all with water, but rather roasted with fire, both its head and its legs, along with its entrails. And you shall not leave any of it over until morning, but whatever is left of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. Now you shall eat it in this manner, with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. <clears throat> the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, this day will be a memorial to you and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses for whoever eats anything leavened, from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day, you shall have a holy assembly and another holy assembly on the seventh day. No work at all shall be done on them except what must be eaten by every person. That alone may be prepared by you. You shall also observe the Feast of Eleven Bread. For on this very day, I brought your host out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. <clears throat> In the first month, on the 14th day of the month that evening, you shall eat the unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses. For whoever eats what is leaven, that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is alien or native of the land. You shall not eat anything leaven in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood, which is in the basin, and apply some of that blood that is in the basin to the lintel and to the two doorposts, and none of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses and smite you. And you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you, he has promised you, 
you shall observe the rite. And when your children say to you, what does this rite mean to you? You shall say it is Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians, but spared our homes. And the people bowed low in worship. Then the sons of Israel went and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So they did. Now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat in his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, all the firstborn of the cattle. So now we're going to jump over to the book of Matthew real quick, and we're going to read another story. So if you go with me to Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 17, and we're going to read down to verse 29. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did just as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12 disciples. As they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Truly not I, Lord. And he answered, He who has dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Truly it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus said to him, you have said it yourself. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. <clears throat> When we read the story of the Passover, we can see how God takes these extraordinary measures to deliver his people from the land of Egypt. And God takes care of everything for the Israelites in that situation. He, he provides the sacrifice. He provides a way to protect them. And because of these plagues that he brings on Egypt, Pharaoh eventually lets his people go and they are able to flee and get out of Egypt, get out of that situation, and start their journey to the promised land. And when we get over to Matthew, we see that Christ is still celebrating Passover. It's probably uh, probably over a thousand years after Passover has been instituted, and the land of Israel, the nation of Israel, rather, is still remembering the Passover, and they're still going through this ritual every year, and they're still remembering how God has delivered them. And Christ is making that parallel to himself. He's saying, you know, I am the new Passover lamb. He's instituting a new covenant with his people. And him going to the cross, he becomes the new sacrifice. The blood that is shed, his blood that is shed covers our sins. His blood becomes the new sacrificial Passover lamb. And as we come into resurrection or Easter season, Resurrection Sunday, we think about those things and we remember Christ, we remember what he did, and we remember how you can trace all the way back to the Old Testament, God's promise of a Messiah, God's promise to deliver his people is being played out throughout history. And Christ was not just an accident or a Hail Mary pass that God threw to try to thwart the plans of the devil. From the very beginning, after humanity fell in Genesis, God put into motion a series of plans to take his people where he wanted them to be and set up the perfect time for his son to come into the world and become that perfect Passover lamb. Uh, there's a resource that's in the link here. If you go to the website today, Tim Mackey did a sermon on the Passover, and it's really excellent. And I recommend if you have time to click on that and watch that later on today. But as we come to Easter Sunday, and we just remember that even though the story of the Exodus and the story of the Israelites happened a long, long time ago. And it's about a certain people who were delivered from slavery in Egypt, much like them today, accepting Christ and allowing his sacrifice to cover us and save us, delivers us from the slavery of sin. And so as you go about your day to day, and as you prepare your heart to come into the Easter 
Easter, Resurrection Sunday, whatever you want to call it, when you when you're preparing your heart for Resurrection Sunday, a week from this Sunday, I believe, just be thinking about how God's sacrifice has taken care of our sins, how Christ's coming has become the new sacrificial lamb, and how that that Passover is now taken to all believers all over all over the world. It's for everyone. And so we can rest in that. We can be thankful for what Christ has done for us. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can say. There's no amount of works that could ever make us right with God. And God knew that. And so he took care of it with his son on the cross. And while the resurrection of Christ is the greatest thing that any of us will ever experience, the death and crucifixion of him is one of the great is the greatest tragedy of all history. And it's because of our sin. But God loved us so much that he sent his son. So I hope that you all have a great day. I hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that God is in your heart. I pray that he is just preparing you to remember how great of a gift you have in his son. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the history that you've given us through the Old Testament, for the story of the Exodus, to, to read about how you delivered your people and brought them out of slavery and to a new, a promised better life. And Lord, that's exactly what you want to do with us. You want to bring us out of the slavery of sin. You want to take us into a newness of life. You want to make us a new creation in your son. I pray that we can accept that this season, that we can share that with people because everywhere around us, um, things are falling apart. Sin has entrapped it every square inch of this earth and sin is destroying things slowly all around us. But Lord, you have provided a way. You have provided a salvation. You have provided a promise of something that, that we couldn't do on our own, something that is here to correct all that is wrong and to bring us back to you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Blessings, guys. Have a great day.